Before I begin, I'd like to make a disclaimer. No part of this speech was written using ChatGPT. <laughs> I'm glad you guys actually laughed, thank you. <laughs> All right, let's begin. The singularity. No, it's not the ultimate UNO card. The term instead refers to the hypothetical point at which artificial intelligence reaches a superhuman level of knowledge and capability. Scary, I know. The way AI is being talked about in contemporary media is drastically divided. AI is either seen as the savior of mankind or the tool for its very own destruction. But as in most cases, I found that the best discussions occupy the gray area between these opposing extremes. So today, I'm not here to make you love AI, but I'm also not here to make you hate it. Instead, I hope to make you think about technology and equity in education. So artificial intelligence as a whole is an exceptionally broad concept. From generative AI to machine learning, there is just a huge range to these technologies. And that's clearly way too broad to cover in just one talk. So today, I'm going to zero in on everyone's favorite large language model, ChatGPT. The text-based AI chatbot known in full as Chat Generative Pre-trained Transformer was developed and released by OpenAI in November of 2022 and has proceeded to become one of the most controversial technologies in the field of education. I mean, it's a teacher's worst nightmare. The magical app that spits out passable essays, answers homework questions, and even solves math problems, all with a few simple keystrokes on a computer. It's difficult to trace and seems to know absolutely everything. So schools have been banning it left, right, and center with concerns that it'll make students too complacent to even think for themselves. But these same arguments were made with the advent of Google and even calculators, tools which everyone here today can agree have become ubiquitous in classrooms worldwide. So what reasons do we have to embrace generative AI, right? What could we possibly gain from integrating this technology into the way that we teach and learn? Well, the AI conversation has been going on for a while, and the main points being mentioned have been centered around um, future-proofing, automating tasks, and reducing teachers' workloads which are all well and good. These are really important issues that we should focus on. However, one field where AI could have perhaps the greatest implications for is educational equity. See, education as it currently exists is an inherently flawed concept. And this is due to one simple fact. It's riddled with inequalities. From lack of access in certain areas or for certain people groups to variations in the quality of education received by people with different incomes. Education therefore fails to create social mobility because only a select few have access to truly transformative and high quality education. So AI's role in reducing these systemic inequalities of class, race, and gender is huge because this technology can democratize learning by narrowing the various access gaps that currently exist within these groups. But who does it help, right? For example, neurodivergent students could experience a more personalized and self-paced learning through AI tools such as machine learning, which can create lessons that are uniquely paced due to a student's progress and understanding. This could effectively solve the shortage and financial inaccessibility crisis in special education, making it available to every single student who needs it. But special education isn't the only area where this tech can be useful. Even students who simply can't afford tutoring could have their own virtual guided tutor through projects like Google, Google's Tailwind, which can provide uh, a service that will prevent financial ability from being the limiting factor to students' academic success. Finally, minority groups being denied an education is a tale as old as time. From the former slaves and people of color in America to women and girls in Pakistan and every single example in between. Movements are being done, however, to counteract these problems, such as Project Cotiladon, where students volunteer to tutor Afghani girls online. However, these projects are facing the issue 
because of the fact that they are limited by the availability of volunteers. And with AI, this progress could exponentially increase. This can be seen by the success of the Climate Cardinals, who partnered with Google's BARD large language model, which is the Google version of ChatGPT, to translate millions of words of climate education for people who don't speak English. And education for social good is becoming increasingly important as we face ever developing complex and challenging global issues that require every single person on this earth to be able to have the information and the ability to act as a united front in preserving our world. It's important to remember though that these positive effects can only be seen when AI is handled correctly. And with ethical concerns like propensity for bias, inaccurate information, and accessibility concerns, profit-centric methods might keep those who actually need it most from accessing these technologies. The good news is that if we start early, we'll be able to prevent all of these challenges with legislative actions that will prevent those with bad intentions from using these technologies for negative purposes. Furthermore, school systems or even individual schools can begin to implement this technology right now, perhaps through teaching their students how best to prompt ChatGPT and how it can be used to enhance their learning experience. Innovative projects like this are already beginning today, like in the Ivy Tech Community College, where AI was used in a pilot study to go through data from 10,000 course selections to save 3,000 students from failing by the end of the semester by reallocating support services where they were needed the most. This now fully implemented project has saved more than 34,000 students from failing in just one school alone. Now imagine the potential implications if we could apply this tech in schools and universities everywhere. We have a long way to go in terms of the accuracy and trustworthiness of the outputs of generative AI. And while a lot of the things I've talked about today are structural or systemic, this may make it hard for you guys as the audience to connect with it because you're just an individual, right? So for the benefit of the audience, I'd like to share some simple things that you can do right now to make ChatGPT a tool to enhance productivity at school or work. Now, I know that most, if not all of you today, have used ChatGPT or a similar AI chatbot in one way or another, even if it may not have been allowed. It's okay, I'm not gonna judge. Um, <laughs> but here, if you haven't used ChatGPT or if you're curious how best you can use it, here's a few ways that it could help you. Number one, it's a powerful summarization tool. You can paste in any text from academic papers, blog posts, or articles, and it can quickly make bullet point summaries, which can be useful if you're rushing to write an essay or a presentation, or you have some kind of exam and you need to do a reading really quickly. Secondly, we've all been in a situation where you're in between drafts of whatever you're writing and you just need a second opinion. And while Grammarly is free, ChatGPT goes an extra step by being able to check your style and tone and even look for specific writing errors that you might know you commonly make. A really cool way that I've been using it is to compare writing texts to see what worked and what didn't and why. Finally, AI-assisted brainstorming could prove huge for your work because even though while the outputs that it puts out are often like really, really cringe or completely overdone, what you could do is read between the lines and add a little bit of human ingenuity to create what might be your best idea. Now, the impact that this technology has on individuals doesn't hold a candle to the potential implications for educational equity as a whole. The educational technology industry is predicted to be worth $404 billion by the end of next year. If even a fraction of that amount could be put towards targeting specific educational inequalities, think of the progress that we could make in one of society's most pressing issues. Now, after this entire speech, you might still be unconvinced. You might be looking at me thinking, Grace, our society does not have the best track record with using tech for good. 
which is a fair assumption there. You don't really need to look far to see the examples of how AI is being used even right now to harm people in ways that we never could have imagined before. But I remain optimistic. I believe that there are enough people who want to do good for good to be done. And if I can convince you as an audience to take that optimism with you in your daily life, you'll be playing a huge role in enhancing the impact. See, my friends and I have taken to calling ChatGPT our little friend, which is mostly a joke, mostly. But I think that's the kind of attitude that we need to embrace this technology and apply it not just to education, but to our daily lives. While the unknown and the novel can be scary, especially when it's as powerful as AI, we are lucky enough to live at the same time as such incredible innovations. Evolution sometimes means starting from scratch, going control, alt, delete on the way that we used to do things to move into the bigger, better, and brighter future of learning. Thank you.